in a headline here from Spiked magazine, who's the real baby here? It gets into who's behind this Donald Trump baby balloon. It's a 20-foot baby balloon of, of Donald Trump in a nappy, which they plan to fly, fly near the Houses of Parliament when Trump visits this week, despite the fact that Donald Trump isn't going anywhere near London because our conservative and name-only government is so afraid of the protesters who might show up. So basically, they've got this 20-foot balloon ready to fly near the Houses of Parliament. This is what it says about it in the Spiked magazine article, Who's the Real Baby Here? The anti-Trump stunt has been organized by environmental activist Leo Murray, the great-grandson of Labour politician Anthony Greenwood. Murray, who rents out two flats in a £1.8 million townhouse in Hammersmith, has written a piece for The Guardian explaining his reasons. Well, of course he has. And basically, it goes on to say that on the morning Trump was elected, this guy cried. Oh, boo-hoo, he cried his eyes out. Now he's going to get his revenge by launching this... Um, uh, Trump blue near the Houses of Parliament, goes on to basically say that they are justifying this. They're saying that the, the motive behind this is because they're fighting back against the establishment. So a project initiated by a super rich member of a political family in London that lives in a, in a cushy townhouse in Hammersmith, £2 million, a project approved by the mayor of London, that's anti-establishment, is it? No, it isn't. That's ridiculous. It's another Corbyn Easter, upper middle class bourgeoisie pretending to be anti-establishment, pretending to be working class when they're not. This is what we see over and over again. And now we have on the line Yanni Brewer, who is the man behind the response to this, which is the Sadiq Khan baby balloon, which he intends to fly at some point over London over the next few weeks. It raised over $50,000 now, over £40,000 in basically less than a week. And as I said earlier, they raised more money in significantly less time than the Trump baby balloon with virtually zero media coverage. An absolutely fantastic effort. They beat them. They're still not getting the recognition they deserve. But Yanni Brewer, welcome to the show. Cool. Thanks for having me, Paul. Now, first, I just want to ask you about what inspired you to start this project and going beyond just flying the balloon. What's the ultimate plan for this project? Yeah, so I mean, in, in the project, um, the reason for doing this, I mean, was uh, I was really annoyed at Khan's willingness to, to insult the most powerful man in the Western world, Donald Trump. You know, he's a friend of Britain, he's half British himself, and, and we need those kind of friends after Brexit. So I was really irritated by it, and, and the fact that Sidi Khan thinks that he can um, say that Donald Trump isn't welcome, or the President of the United States, a great ally of ours, isn't welcome. Uh, to, to London or to the UK on our behalf when he's not elected to represent us is, is really frustrating and irritating. So I wanted to address the, the serious issue of free speech as well um, in a lighthearted way. And I thought the best way to do that would be a tit-for-tat move and um, see if Sadiq Khan is willing to, to have a giant blimp um, of himself, caricature of himself, and per permit his own insulting mockery uh, in the name of free speech. Um, and moving now, beyond... Uh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, and, and beyond this, you know, um, I think everyone's had enough of Sadiq Khan in terms of the, the crime and him trying to talk on our behalf. And, and like you said, um, what's the bigger reason behind it? The bigger reason is to, to try and remove Khan from office. He's clearly not fit to be mayor. We, you know, we've seen that with the soaring crime rates in, in London uh, and his failure and unwillingness to, to address those serious issues. So correct me if I'm wrong, but... You plan to have some kind of event. I don't know how much you want to get into this, but you, you plan on having some kind of event which draws attention to the massive violent crime problems we've been having in London. Is that correct? Yeah. So the idea is to synchronize the, the baby Khan uh, balloon blimp and have it airborne at this event. The event will be make London great, uh, make London safe again. Sorry. Uh, it'll be sometime in August. We're kind of working on the, the exact details of it. But it'll be sometime in August um, with the aim of trying to make London safe again. And of course, you know, um, London can't be safe with Sadiq Khan as mayor. Now, let's talk about the media attention, because as I mentioned earlier, you made more money in less time than the Trump baby balloon, despite the fact that they basically had a week or more of sustained intense media coverage. How interested has the mainstream media been in your project? Yeah, so we went live on Thursday. Today's Tuesday, so five days we've made 40,000. I think the Trump uh, balloon has made about 27,000 in over a month. So it has been um, quite astonishing, really. The mainstream media, 
uh, after yourself, you got involved. Um, I had a couple of messages from from a few people um, yesterday and today. It's picked up a little bit. I'm um, on the Victoria Derbyshire show tomorrow at the BBC. Um, the Sun have contacted me. I think I, the I newspaper in the UK, have done a piece. Uh, but it's obviously nowhere near as much as, as the baby Trump um, balloon. So it was only after you started making serious money and getting this funded that they actually had to pay attention to it. You got more money in three days than they got in 30 days. Absolutely monumental effort. But, you know, with this Trump visit, we've had, uh, I've spoken to people, people in UKIP and others, who've said, you know, they've tried to have Trump welcoming street parties or celebrations, not even protests. They're being told no by the police. Obviously, the police have uh, authorized these giant protests to take place on Friday. Um, Khan, Sadiq Khan, has authorized the, the blimp to go up on Friday. Would he, would he have approved a giant inflatable black Barack Obama baby blimp flying over Parliament? This is the question. And do, has he already approved your balloon or is that still in the works? That's still in the works. And no, of course, he wouldn't have approved a, a baby Obama, would he? It just wouldn't have happened. Um, I saw that today he was on the is it a Great Morning Britain show or something with Piers Morgan. And Piers Morgan asked him, he said, you know, um, if, the, if someone makes a, a baby blimp of you or you as a pig caricature, um, would you be willing to fly? And he said, if it's a safe and peaceful demonstration, then yes. So based on that, you know, I don't see any reason why it won't go ahead. Um, and I think he's kind of pigeonholed himself a little bit um, in terms of his, his maneuvers now. So he's basically backed himself into a corner. What exactly is this blimp going to look like? Is it just going to be Sadiq in a, in a nappy? Or are you going to incorporate some kind of pig design into it now that they've mentioned that? It's, it's currently with an illustration artist, uh, an illustrator. Um, so we're going to work on a couple of different designs, see what's best. But, you know, it's got to capture the horrible features of Sadiq, you know, the horrible hook nose, the bags under the eyes. And it's, it's going to be uh, pretty gruesome. We'll see how triggered he gets, because that was my response when I first read about the Trump balloon. You know, a lot of people on the right said, oh, this is a disgrace. This is insulting the president, which it is. But that's kind of not the reaction you have, because then you get called a snowflake. They say you're triggered. Obviously, they're, they're too dim-witted to think up their own insults, so they just use our insults against us. But your response is exactly right. You take that and you turn it back on them. Then you make him look like an absolute hypocrite if he doesn't authorize this. So I guess, I'm guessing that was your response. So the response wasn't to get offended by the Trump baby balloon. It was to respond in the way you did, which was to use the exact same stunt against them, right? Exactly, yeah. So I thought, uh, OK, if you want to play that game, you know, two can play that game. But this time, you're going to have to prove yourself um, in having a big, massive 30-foot blimp of yourself flying over London. And we'll see how nice that is. See if you're willing to submit yourself to the same public humiliation you are so easily to, to Donald Trump. Now, we're going to come back after the break and talk more about this. Talk about the, the sheer hypocrisy in Khan having nothing to say about, you know, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia visiting the Islamist dictator Erdogan. just want to read some stats, though, about uh, London crime under Sadiq Khan since he came to power as mayor. Knife attacks have soared by 21 percent, shooting incidents by 23 percent, street robberies by 33 percent, motorbike robberies by 50 percent and murders by 40 percent. In February and March, London had more murders. It exceeded the murder rate of New York. This is a giant problem. His previous excuse was to say, oh, but we did a report about that last month. And basically, it's getting worse and worse and worse. The police are being given fewer and fewer powers to actually chase these moped criminals, for example. They're trying to turn it round right now simply because of the massive public backlash. But again, these, these figures seem to be getting worse and worse. That's what you're going to be drawing attention to with this, this Sadiq Khan baby balloon. And it's going to be very intriguing how they respond to it. But we're going to talk about it more after the break. We're talking to Yanni Brewer about the Sadiq Khan baby inflatable balloon that he plans to fly over London next month. We're talking about the Trump baby balloon, which is set to fly over London this Friday. Now, just looking at some of the recent uh, visitors to London, let's take a look at this shortlist. Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman. This is a guy who's presiding over war crimes in Yemen. He's presiding over the persecution of gays and women in Saudi Arabia. Who protested his visit to London? Barely anybody. Let's look at the Islamist dictator President Erdogan of Turkey. You know, a guy who locks up journalists, a guy who tortures people, a guy who has his own goons beat people up in the United States. Who protested his visit? 
barely anybody. Let's look at what's happening in Iran. Women are literally being tortured and imprisoned for removing their hijabs. There was another famous case of that that happened this week. Where are the feminists? Where are the marches on the Iranian embassies? They're not happening. Sadiq Khan said nothing about any of that. Nobody really protested it. Oh, but Donald Trump, Donald Trump said, grab them by the pussy 13 years ago, and we're expecting 100,000 people out on the streets. Absolutely absurd, the level to which people allow themselves to be manipulated by fake moral outrage, fake hysteria. You know, Yanni, how many of these people are going to be out protesting this weekend because they feel a genuine moral urge to do so? And how many of them are going to be doing it, you know, for an Instagram selfie because they're vapid, virtue signaling morons? Yeah, I mean, I, I think with the anti-Trump thing, I think people are anti-Trump to be anti-Trump, aren't they? I don't think there's any, there's no real substance to any of it. Otherwise, they'd be out there, you know, campaigning against like the, the people you just mentioned. Um, so. A lot of it is to do with popularity. It's really popular. It's really cool to be anti-Trump. Uh, and if you're not anti-Trump, then you're uncool and, and basically you're silenced and you can't say that you're pro-Trump or anything. So a lot of it is just uh, it's, it's bullshit, isn't it, really? It's, it's, that's exactly the word for it. It's also there's no Glastonbury this year, so they can't all shout for Jeremy Corbyn, so they're probably missing that. Let me read you this uh, quote from the uh, Trump baby balloon activist, your arch nemesis. He said, quote, what could have been a day of infamy for Britain, he's talking about the visit of Trump, instead becomes a day of national pride and unity. So he thinks he's literally going to create national pride and unity by flying this 20-foot uh, Trump baby balloon. Yanni, how much unity do you think those people would exhibit in that crowd if you attended their protest wearing a red MAGA hat? Do you think they'd be uh, very, very uh, forgiving and very unifying in that situation. No, I'm sure it'd be, it would be the same as being, you know, um, fed to a pack of wolves if, if I was there wearing a Make America Great Again hat. So uh, it's, it's it's all kind of double standard, isn't it? It's completely double standards. Um, what they what they say they tolerate and, and this kind of thing, they don't. It's the complete opposite. It's actually the people on the who are more pro-Trump on the right are the ones who are who are more tolerant. It's incredible. Also, now this is not to advocate any illegal activity whatsoever. We obviously don't do that. But anybody who's been reading 4chan over the past few days knows that they've located where this Trump baby balloon is. As with past 4chan events, specifically with the Shia LaBeouf and everything that happened with him, they're talking about bringing this inflatable balloon down. Do you see that happening? Is, do, you, do you think that's on the horizon, given how much chatter there is on 4chan about it? I haven't seen the chat on 4chan personally, but um, it, you know, it would be good to see if it did come down. It'd be nice to see. I'm not, uh, you know, like you said, advocating that. But um, I think there's, uh, I think people underestimate just how irritating uh, this event is, just how, how irritating this balloon is. Um, and people underestimate it, and they, they think that everyone's anti-Trump in the UK, and it's not the case. It's just not the case. Um, so you could well see it come down. You could see. It, it, you know, a counter protest of some sort. Um, but th these people are so blinded, but, uh, you know, these people in London, these uh, pro um, anti-Trump, sorry, they're so blinded by themselves that they don't, they don't see anything else. They don't see that there is actually support for Donald Trump in the UK. It, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really annoying when they claim to speak for everyone in the UK by being so intolerant of his visit while claiming that they're the tolerant ones. I mean, you had France. France basically got a jump on us again. The population of France, I imagine, are no great fans of Donald Trump in any in any large majority. It's probably the same as in the UK. But they got a jump on everyone. They arranged, a, I think it was a state visit or the equivalent of, before anyone else. There were no giant protests, obviously a few, no giant protests. It worked out well for both countries. You know, they could get over their little butthurt and just acknowledge the fact that even if you don't like the president, you have to respect the office and to ostracize the president that's only going to harm our interests, as he said, when we need this Brexit deal, if even, you know, Brexit happens at all at this point. But just in closing, Yanni, tell people how they can support the funding and the organization of this Sadiq Khan baby balloon event. Yeah, so we're still on crowdfunding. We've got until the 9th of August. So we've been going five days. We've got £40,000. Um, so it's a long way to go, 9th of August, uh, for the funding. So the bigger the donations, the bigger the, the amount we raise, the bigger the balloon, the bigger the event. 
uh, the more we can do on the day to help make London safe again. Um, and if you want to get involved, you can contact uh, myself on Twitter or um, uh, there'll be a few other details as well in the next coming days of who else to contact in regards to that. But yeah, keep the money coming in. And then, you know, the, the more we raise, the bigger this event can be and the more pressure we can put on, on City Khan. Definitely. So people got a few weeks to keep that money rolling in. You, you can stage a bigger and bigger event the more money you get. And basically have a have a real response to these people who claim to represent those in the UK. They don't. You've proven that by out raising them in a, in a matter of days. It took them a month to make, what, £27,000? You made that in almost in just over three days. Absolutely monumental effort. Uh, the, the, real, the real fight back begins. We will have our voice just as they have theirs and we'll continue to monitor it. Yanni Brewer, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. There goes Yanni Brewer with the Sadiq Khan baby balloon protest. Be sure to go and find that and uh, donate. It will be in the description when this video goes up on YouTube. Please click the big red button to subscribe. It really helps me when you do that. And click the bell to allow notifications so you never miss a new video. Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine. If you're interested in healthy thyroid, if you're interested